Do you know what is included in your Reason Plus subscription? If you're anything like the average human being, the answer is probably not. I'm Oscar from Underdog Electronic Music School, and though I may be a Reason Ambassador, I am just a human being and I am, just like you, equally bewildered and perplexed and confounded by the variety and depth of the offering within Reason Plus. So it is my goal in this video to chart your way, to sort of navigate your way through the safari of wonderful things that are in the Reason Plus subscription and to hopefully categorize them in a slightly better way so that you can actually find what you're looking for when you're looking for it. You see, when you sign up for Reason Plus, you get more than you asked for. You get 81, if I counted them correctly, 81 different tools, which quite frankly, the UI doesn't really do a great job in helping you to explore or to discover the right ones. So I tried organizing them myself to present them to you today. And I ended up first with a text list, then with an Excel list, then with some PowerPoint presentations. And all of that was crushingly boring. So instead, I decided to use my creativity and organize them in a more memorable, simplified way. A little bit of a storybook. Here are the three magical beasts of the Reason ecosystem. I told you today it was going to be a safari. All right. So, <laughs> so the logic here is that the first beast is all the sound generating devices, right? So anything that you play and a sound comes out. The second beast are all the sound effects, the audio effects, the things like reverbs and delays, the things that change a sound that you put into it. And the third one are the MIDI generation tools, the different tools that create musical MIDI patterns that you can then feed into those first categories. So three categories, sound devices, effects, and MIDI generation devices. And under that last category, I'm going to add in some of the more functional tools that Reason has in there as well. Now, before I get any questions about what's happening here, <laughs> I, I hate that I have to admit this on camera. Um, two days ago, I was making pancakes in the kitchen and I'm a relatively tall person and I literally just banged my head. And today is video day and what can you do, right? People with hair can hide that stuff. I don't have that luxury. So you just have to deal with it. Hey everyone, this is Editing Oscar from the future. You can tell because my head is healed. <laughs> and I think that before getting into the individual devices, I think I should have clarified the reason is in fact a DAW, which means it's a fully fledged audio production and recording uh, like suite in itself or it can work as a VST inside of other programs. So for example, I use Ableton Live a lot. So inside of Ableton Live, I can load Reason as a VST. So I can use all my favorite Reason racks without necessarily leaving the comfort of my native DAW. So a Reason Plus subscription is a DAW, a whole set of VSTs in fact, and then also the weekly sound packs that Reason publishes in the companion app. So every week there's new presets to enlarge your toolbox even further. All right, past Oscar, get started with category number one. Anyway, let's get into category one, sound devices. All right, so category one, sound devices. In electronic music, there really are maybe four big categories of instruments. And I would say one of them is the drum machine. One of them is the synthesizer. One of them is the sampler, and one of them is the multi-sampler. So the drum machine plays drums. It's not very complicated. The synthesizer uses various waveforms to create sound. The sampler is like an empty box that you put a sound in and you can play it and manipulate it in various ways. And the multi-sampler is like the sampler, but it is made with the specialized intention to mimic a different instrument. So for example, if you record every note on an acoustic piano and then load that into a sampler so that the sampler behaves exactly like an acoustic piano, that's what a multi-sampler is doing. It's a different objective and a different workflow than a regular sampler, even if the technology behind them is very similar. So you'll be happy to know that Reason has all four of these categories, starting with the drum machines. There are no less than six of those. There's the Kong drum designer. There's the Redrum drum machine, totally not murder, by the way, which has a cool step sequencer in it and is with us since the very beginning of Reason. There's the Rhythmic drum machine. There's the Reason drum kits for if you want to start a mosh pit. And then there's the Oomph twins, the Oomph club drums and the oomph retro beats. All of these drum machines are capable of quite a wide variety, quite a wide palette of sounds. So flick through some presets to see what you like. Already this video is paying off for me because my muscle memory always goes to the Kong drum machine, but actually the oomph club drums has some really characterful percussion in there, which is something that I'm sometimes missing when I'm making slightly too predictable drum patterns. So that's where I'm going to be exploring next. Thank you to this video already for showing the way. On to the next category, the synthesizers. 
These are the ones that are the most marketable because they are the most iconic. There's nine of them and they cover a wide different array of what synthesizers are capable of using very different synthesis techniques. The first synthesizer and their flagship synthesizer is the Europa. They call it a shape-shifting synth and that's because it does a whole bunch of trickery and algorithmic interesting things at the level of the oscillators and at the level of the filters. Something that is beyond just subtractive synthesis and beyond just wavetable synthesis. You're gonna have to watch some of the dedicated content that they've got on that because it's way too deep to go into in just one video. There's the Thor polyphonic synthesizer. This beast has become a classic over the past decade. It is a super powerful and versatile synth that can do most of your synthesis needs. I remember Thor coming out just around the time when I was starting with Reason. It was the new flagship synth that was complementing the next two synths, which are the Subtractor Analog Synth and the Maelstrom Grain Table Synthesizer. No wonder I was confused back then. Granular synthesis and wavetable synthesis are two separate concepts, and here they're mixed in one. Mind-bending stuff. Then there's the monotone bass synth for all your monophonic bass synth needs. There's the algorithm FM synth for all your FM synthesis needs. There's the complex one modular synth for all your modular synthesis needs. There are the friction modeled strings for all your physical modeling synthesis needs. And then the parsec spectral synth, which I don't know anything about. Let me look it up. Oh, Parsec is an additive synthesis. Awesome. So these are all the synthesizers that Reason has, and they span the entire spectrum of what's possible with synthesis. The completeness of this is kind of mad when you think about it and when you see it all in one place. I think myself, I had a hard time understanding how complete Reason is just from the way it's presented in the UI in lists. Anyway, on to the next part, the samplers. So the basic concept of samplers, as you know, is that it's an empty box, you put a sound into it, and then you manipulate that sound. You trigger it, or you repitch it, or you do some stuff with it, right? And I would say at first glance that Reason has three samplers. There's the Dr. Octorex loop player, where the idea is that it's not really individual samples, but like entire loops, and then you trigger different parts from it. There's the Mimic Creative Sampler, which I think is the most versatile sampler in there in the sense of its playability and how accessible it is. So the Mimic is the one that I would go to if I had like a creative vocal sample and I wanted to manipulate it in some way. And then there's the Grain Sample Manipulator, which is kind of like a granular synthesizer in the sense that you put a sound in there, it chops it up into tiny little bits and then plays those tiny little bits like a cloud of sound. Granular synthesis is amazing at sort of creating ambiences or clouds of sound. And that brings us to the multi-samplers, kind of you can consider those virtual instruments. Some objectives for multi-samplers might be realism or playability. And I feel like Reason has approached this same objective from several different angles. There are three versatile instruments for this, known rather cryptically as the ID8, the NNXT Advanced Sampler, and the NN19 Sampler. In themselves, those names don't necessarily inspire their musical use very clearly, but you should definitely have a look through their presets to find what instruments have been made for them. Then beyond that, there are a number of multi-samplers which are more helpfully labeled, such as the Radical Piano, the Radical Keys, Processed Pianos, the Clang-Tuned Percussion for all your steel drum and marimba type needs, the Pangea World Instruments, and the Humana Vocal Ensemble for vocal textures. And then there are some more abstract multi-samplers like the Layers and the Layers Wave Edition and the Scenic Hybrid Instrument, aimed obviously at very cinematic textures. And that's it. And there you go. Those are the sound devices that are in reason. That wasn't too bad, was it? Hopefully you've seen some things here that piqued your interest and that you want to explore. Even if you are a veteran Reason user, this might inspire you to pick up something new. Now let's leave this beautiful dragon behind and go on to this cosmic space snake. In the cosmic space snake, we find all the effects. The idea is you play a sound on some other sound making device and you feed it into one of these effects and something special comes out. I see seven broad categories of effects. I would say, I would say there's delays, there's reverbs, classic, there's saturation, classic, there's modulation, wild, there are vocal effects, there are sequenced effects, and then there are channel strip effects for mixing and mastering. So let's start with the delays. There's a beautiful characterful delay unit called the Echo, which is absolutely one of the selling points of the Reason Plus subscription. And there's the more old school DDL1 digital delay line. It's part of the older, like let's call them vintage effects that are still included in Reason. Then in terms of reverb, there's also this vintage RV7 or the more complete RV7000 MK2. That is a mouthful, honestly. And maybe for their next reverb, they should think of something a little bit more pronounceable. 
Sorry to be shady, Reason Headquarters. I love you. Then in saturation, one of my favorite units, the pulverizer. Love that thing. Absolutely super versatile, crazy machine. And the Scream 4 distortion, which has been with the Reason Suite since 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 animals could talk. There's also the soft tube amp and the soft tube and the soft tube bass amp. That's a tongue twister. The soft tube amp and the soft tube bass amp. <laughs> The soft tube amp and the soft tube, ba the soft tube, the soft tube amp and the soft tube bass amp. If you think you can do it better, prove it. There's the Audiomatic Retro Transformer, which is quite unique in that it can degrade your sound in a super interesting way. Maybe consider this uh, an alternative when you're thinking of slapping an RC20 on something. Maybe think of slapping this on there instead. And then there's the vintage D11 fallback distortion. Anyway, onto the modulation. Modulation really just means changing over time, and so there's a bunch of effects that are kind of based on that principle. There's a chorus effect called Quartet Chorus Ensemble. There's the sweeper modulation effect. There's the CF101 chorus flanger the ph90 phaser i mean i don't know why all these numbers are necessary <laughs> the un16 unison the polar dual pitch shifter the rotor rotary speaker and the dual lfo which can be hooked up to pretty much any parameter anywhere using reason's little cables to turn almost anything into a modulation effect Speaking of changing over time, I would say sequenced effects are kind of a related category, but a different category. There's the alligator filter gate and the synchronous effect modulator. And then there's a bunch of vocal effects. There's a BV512 vocoder. There's a BVX multimodal vocoder. And there's a Neptune pitch adjuster, kind of like an autotune type effect. And then once you've created all these weird and wonderful timbres, you can go on to the last category, which is the channel strip effects, which is your mixing and mastering plugins. They are the master bus compressor the channel dynamics, the channel EQ, the M-class equalizer, compressor, maximizer, and stereo imager, the ECF42 envelope controlled filter, a really complicated way of just saying it's a filter, the COM01 compressor limiter, the PEQ22 band parametric EQ, and, <laughs> and the PEQ22 band parametric EQ, and the PEQ22 band parametric EQ. That was a fun one to say. <laughs> Try it at home and see how it makes you feel. The PEQ two band parametric EQ. The rain in Spain is mainly on the plane. The soft tube amp and the soft tube bass amp. So there we go. Effects, reverb, delay, saturation, all sorts of weird and wacky modulation, vocal effects, sequenced effects, and channel strip effects for mixing. Amazing, amazing. I'm really proud of how far we've come. To be honest, the effect was the part I was worried about the most because it's maybe the most overwhelming section. Now we're in the last section with this beautiful zebra unicorn, zebra corn, let's call it, which organizes two main categories. There's the organization tools and the MIDI generation tools. Let's talk quickly about the organizational tools so we can kind of get them out of the way because in themselves they don't really make sound. So let's just gloss over them real quick. There's the combinator, which is this tool to make your own complex racks. You might remember I did this in a video on making techno rumbles. I made some racks where you just feed in a kick and then a techno rumble comes out. You can get those as a free download in that video by the way. There's the spider audio mergers and splitters for both audio and CV. So if you like working with the little cables on the back, which I highly recommend that you do, this is a great place to merge and split your audio or your CV. You've also got the mixer and the line mixer, two very versatile tools for blending audio signals together. And the MIDI out device, which seems innocent enough until you combine it with one of the player devices and send all of this amazing MIDI to one of your hardware synths, and then your mind just explodes with possibilities. So MIDI out, Super dangerous if you know how to use it. But that brings us to our last category, which arguably could be worth the entire subscription in itself. I know people who strongly believe that just one or two of these player devices are worth the entire Reason subscription alone. So let's go over them real quick. Back when I first started with Reason, there were like two tools, I would say, that were very good at generating MIDI in a, in a sequenced kind of a way, which was the RPG-8 and the Matrix Pattern Sequencer. Secretly, I still love the Matrix Pattern Sequencer. It's so simple and versatile and does exactly what you need it to. I love it so much. But since then, Reason have introduced something called their player devices, which is really a whole 
whole suite of devices aimed at generating cool and musical MIDI. So for example, there's something called the Scales and Chords player. There's the Beat Map player, which has a weird kind of topographical way of exploring generating drum beats. But for those of you in techno, you can also use these rhythmical beats to feed them into synthesizers. There's the dual arpeggio player. I did a whole video on that one right here. And you get to see me sing in that video, which I'm not sure is a plus. There's the note echo player, which is fun. It's kind of like a delay line or a pitched delay line for notes. There's the bass line generator player, which I did a whole video on right here. And that's the one that so many people report might just be worth the price of entry alone. You can think of it as basically a monophonic riff generator, where you can choose the balance between on-beat notes and off-beat notes and then tweak according to your needs. It's beautiful. There's the chord sequencer player. That's something kind of like maybe Scalar 2 or a more playful version of something like that, where you have these kind of palettes of chords that go well together and you can intuitively kind of feel what you want to express in your song using that color palette. There's the drum sequencer player, very classical to pair with any drum machine. There's the pattern mutator player, which I didn't understand at first until someone explained it to me that it's basically like an acid riff generator. You fill in a whole bunch of notes and then you hit pattern mutate and it creates a derivative version of that pattern, which then feeds beautifully into something like the monotone bass synthesizer. So it's also kind of a riff generator. And in this video, I kind of use it in a non-standard way to create sort of weird techno rumbles, but in a way that I call post rumbles. See if you like it. Then there's the poly step sequencer. Very cool polyphonic step sequencer. It's quite rare for step sequencers to be polyphonic, so this is worth exploring as well. And then there's the quad note generator, which I believe is kind of aimed at generative music. And those are all the reason player devices, baby. We did it. We did it. 81 devices in a video. Oh my God. Are you still with me? If you are, Congratulations! This is unbelievable. Feel free to download my three cosmic power animal posters in the link below. I feel like after organizing things according to this, I know exactly where to find everything. For example, if I need to see where all the synths are, I know it's around the butt of this red dragon in space. I think I think that helps. I think that helps. That helps me. I might have a very specific psychology. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for sticking with me. As I said, my name is Oscar. Check out my channel, Underdog Electronic Music School. I highly recommend taking a look at the Reason Plus subscription where you get all of these things included in it. I haven't even mentioned the super high quality instruments that exist as rack extensions for Reason. As if these 81 instruments weren't even enough. There's some really cool creators out there making rack extensions as well. Before I sign off, as a little footnote, do pay attention to which version of Reason you are buying or buying a subscription to. Everything I said in this video is applicable to the Reason Plus subscription bundle, where you get everything included in the Reason ecosystem. So go off with these tools, make noise, make a nuisance of yourself, have fun, and until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care. Bye-bye.